In both today's Torah portion and the half Torah portion, we hear stories of women struggling with infertility who ultimately become pregnant. In the Torah reading, it is the matriarch, Sarah, who has struggled to conceive for many years until she finally becomes pregnant with Isaac. In the half Torah portion, it is Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel, who is known for her intense, thank you, and desperate prayer as she begged God to please grant her a child. As the Torah tells us that Sarah finally conceived, it says, God remembered Sarah. Rosh Hashanah is also called Yom Hazikaron, or the Day of Remembrance. I started thinking about the notion of God remembering us in our despair, because it suggests that at some point, God has forgotten us. We don't need to remember something unless it's been forgotten. A year ago, I stood up here giving a Dvar Torah in which I talked about the fact that one of the hardest parts of the pandemic and quarantining and dealing with the trauma of so many people being ill and dying was not knowing when it was all going to be over. I talked about the importance of having faith in the process and finding ways to enjoy the everyday in the midst of the not knowing. But it never occurred to me that a year later, I'd be standing here again and we'd still be in the midst of it all. And then I was reading through these passages about God remembering Sarah, and it started to feel like God has somewhat abandoned humanity this last year and a half. I've always struggled with my relationship with God, and even whether or not I truly believe that God exists at all. I have felt very welcome in Judaism, though, a place that encourages questioning and doesn't require sureness or acceptance of any principles to participate. But one thing I've always felt deeply is that even if God exists, it's not her job to do everything for us. There are certainly things that are beyond our control, and for those things, it makes sense to turn to God. But there are also a lot of things that are within our control. How we treat one another, for example, which I believe is really at the root of our happiness. Watching the way the last year has unfolded, what has been most distressing, even more than the actual virus and the way that it has ravaged our country, is the way that we all seem so unwilling to treat our neighbors without kindness or grace. The summer before I entered my junior year of high school, I returned to Camper Mountain the Berkshires for my last summer as a camper. I remember vividly a morning early in the summer when our division was supposed to have a breakfast cookout. We'd been at the fire pit for a while and nothing was happening. None of the counselors had even begun to get the fire started. Finally, some of my friends just decided to take matters into their own hands. They started collecting small twigs for kindling and eventually got the fire started. Others of us started prepping the eggs and the pans and together we made breakfast all on our own. And later we learned it was all a setup. Our counselors didn't forget to feed us. They took a step back and let us figure it out on our own. So maybe God didn't forget or abandon humanity this year so much as God decided to take a step back and see what we would do left to our own devices in a challenging situation. If that's the case, how do we think we did? From my perspective, not great. We live in a world that has become increasingly polarized. We make decisions about things before we've even heard all of the information based solely on what side of the proverbial aisle we sit on. We have the internet at our fingertips and believe that makes us experts on all things. We have lost our humility. We have lost our curiosity. We have forgotten how to listen to each other and, op and 